Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome back to The Correct Views. Sam I B reporting for The Media Speaks. Go to themediaspeaks.com. Well, not now. Wait till you're done. Make sure you go. There are tons of articles up there. Court, D-Lake, Kyle. So many reports going up there. Many different things. It is like the next news hub. You've got to start going there if you're not already. All right, guys, I'm going to have the beautiful Christelle probably doing some camera moving around here because I don't have uh, the computer I need yet to, uh, wait, wait one second. You don't have the computer I need yet to be able to call um, pictures up on the screen, and until I get it, I'm going to have to just show you a screenshot. But real quick, I'm going to get to what it is that I'm covering and then what I'm trying to do here in Canton. This is Steve Watson, InfoWars, Charlottesville, Virginia, becomes first city to ban government spy drones. Um, for those of you that may not know, the government is using drones that we use in other countries to uh, basically bomb houses and whatnot, um, and also for surveillance, to start surveillance on the American people. For those of you that have read or have at least seen the movie 1984, then you know that drones uh, were considered absolutely out of the question in American culture at the time that that was written to many. And yet now, it looks like that is exactly the direction that we are going in. This would put the Fourth Amendment in the paper shredder. So this is what Virginia has done, and I'm going to uh, move the camera in a second and show you something. Yesterday, we brought you news of the efforts of the House of Delegates and the state of Virginia to bring about a two-year memorandum on the use of surveillance drones by government law enforcement agencies. Today, we learned that Charlottesville, Virginia has passed legislation to outlaw the use of drones, making it the first in the city to do so. This is dated the 5th. In a 3-2 vote, city councilors passed the anti-drone resolution Monday, echoing the state-level F level effort to halt the use of drones for the next two years. There will, in effect, now be a ban on the craft entering Charlottesville city limits, prohibiting any city agency from using the technology. I want to go down real quick and mention what, uh, I'm going to skip what the actual resolution says, because after I do a screenshot, I'm about to read it to you. Anti-drone activist David Swanson, who led protests in the days and hours before the council vote, notes on his website that citizens speaking in favor of the anti-drone resolution dominated the public speaking period at the beginning of the meeting, shortly after 7 p.m. Many were quite eloquent, and the video will be available on the city's website. All right, so this is what I have made up. I'm going to take a screenshot of it so that you can see it. Um, new new uh, email address up, by the way. It is the correct views at hotmail.com. That just seemed much simpler for everybody. All right, look at this real quick. This is what I am sending to the Canton City Council. Greetings, Mr. Shulman, who is, of course, the councilman. In light of some of the infringements seen in other areas, the question has been raised about where Canton, Ohio, stands on the issue of drones. To many, including myself, there are they are seen as something that utterly destroys what remains of the already tattered Fourth Amendment. As such, I am asking the Canton City Council to stand as Virginia has against the use in our communities. Perhaps, and if only under the most stringent of rules, and with many limitations that protect of the rights of the Canton's population, I wrote, in regards to search and rescue, such drones may have a small but useful role. In all other areas, the use of drones, I go on, is seen as an attack on the rights of the populace of the city. Many argue that any drone use should be rendered illegal, while others are open to the idea of search and rescue uses. I would be more than happy to speak on this matter at any time. This is the way I close it. Below is a portion of what, has, what was done and what I and many others would like to see adopted here in Canton, Ohio. Under my name is a link to the whole article. A copy of this is being read on our show, The Correct Views. That'd be this one. And we are awaiting your reply. Thank you kindly for your time. And this is the part that I said that I was going to get to in the last article. The resolution adopted by the council reads, and what I would like to see adopted in Canton reads, Whereas the rapid implementation of drone technology throughout the United States poses a serious threat to the privacy and constitutional rights of the American people, including the residents of Charlottesville, Canton, and whereas the federal government and Commonwealth of Virginia, Ohio, have thus far failed to provide reasonable legal restrictions on the use of drones within the United States, 
And whereas police departments throughout the country have begun implementing drone technology absent of any guidance or guidelines from lawmakers, now therefore let it be resolved that the City of Council of Charlottesville, Virginia, Canton, Ohio, endorses the proposal for a two-year memorandum on drones in the state of Virginia and calls on the United States Congress and General Assembly of the Commonwealth of Virginia, Canton, Ohio, the state of Ohio, to adapt legislation prohibiting information obtained from the domestic use of drones from being introduced into federal or state court and precluding the domestic use of drones equipped with anti-personnel devices, meaning any projectile, chemical, electrical, directed energy, visible or invisible, or other device designed to harm, incapacitate, or otherwise impact a human being, and pledges to abstain from similar use with city-owned, leased, or borrowed drones. That means these things cannot be equipped to attack the American people. Sincerely, Samuel DeGange, the last part's not in the uh, letter, I just, for those of you listening that wonder what I was talking about. Sincerely, Samuel DeGange, the correct views. What you are seeing now is me hitting send. Bingo. All right, people, help me. I'm trying to get this done in Canton, and I think that would be the step in the right direction. So we're going to do it. And we're going to try to get it done, and we're going to see what reply we get. Um, Virginia approves bill to undermine Obama gun control. This is also from Steve Watson, but because I had some Virginia news, I wanted to go ahead and get to it, because most of it's pretty good. The Virginia House of Delegates approved a bill Friday that would see state agencies and employees forbidden from helping to enforce federal gun control measures in the state. The Virginian pilot reports that the Militia, Police, and Public Safety Committee of the House approved House Bill 2340, which will now proceed to a vote on the House floor. The measure's official summary states that the bill would prevent any agency, political subdivision, or employee of Virginia from assisting the federal government of the United States in any investigation, persecution, detention, arrest, search, or seizure under the authority of any federal statute enacted or executive order or regulation issued after December 31st, 2012, infringing the individual right to keep and bear arms by imposing new restrictions on private ownership or private transfer of firearms, firearm magazine, ammunition, and components thereof. For those of you that are still listening, welcome to The Thinking People. I know it's been a very wordy show, but there's a reason for this, people. There's a very, very good reason. The state of Virginia is standing up against drones, and now they're saying that the federal government may not come and take their guns, and they are going to make it illegal for the federal government to do so before the federal government decides that it's legal for them to go ahead and do it which is wonderful news. Start to do these things in your community, like I did. I just sent something out uh, for the drones to Canton, Ohio City Council. Get involved, people. It's not that hard. You saw, I, I did it. If I could do it, a monkey could do it. All right. A monolithic intelligence agency collecting info on every American to predict crimes. Infowars.com. Back in March, Infowars noted that the new guidelines to put forth by Obama administration will allow U.S. spy agencies under the umbrella of the National Security Agency. No, I'm sorry, under the umbrella of National Counterterrorism Center, my fault, to keep records on innocent Americans without oversight for up to five years. Where is the Fourth Amendment? Does anybody know that the Fourth Amendment is there to protect you from drones, from the government coming to assume that you've got guns for illegal purposes, and to predict crimes? What kind of insanity is this? The rules on data retention were relaxed following the 09 Christmas Day underpants bomb debacle, which we all know was staged. U.S. representatives immediately called for the NCTC's authority to be expanded, saying that there was not enough communication between intelligent agencies. So it's okay to just drag a big net over everybody's communication and just keep it for five years. We warned that changes in such rules would aid the already vast 
spying architecture that the federal government has aimed directly at the American people. It goes on, unfortunately. This week, a report in the Wall Street Journal issues the very same warning, noting that the NCTC can use the data that it collates from, collates from every U.S. intelligence agency's database and analyze it to predict possible criminal behavior of any U.S. citizen. Now, how many of you know, just know, that the government would never, I mean never, set anybody up with such technology? No. No, they're good people. It's like the Tuskegee experiments. How kind could you be? For now on, citizens interacting with the federal government are subjected to a procedure where the first question asked is, are they a terrorist? Well, it all depends if they want them to be a terrorist, because there's no oversight on this. There's absolutely nothing in the Constitution that protects you being used in this. And I can report on it, people. It is up to you to do something. Now, this is from the thegatewaypundit.com. Jim Hoft, liberal media already pushing death panels for fat people and smokers. Remember, Obama, there weren't going to be any death panels. Then you got Bloomberg out in uh, New York City. Uh, he wants to be president. That'd be almost as bad as Hillary. Nothing could be as bad as Hillary. Be almost. Bloomberg, you know, outlawing what size drink you could have. And for those of you that don't know, I already told you New York City dwellers how to get around it. What you do is you get the two liter bottle, you cut a hole in the little cap that goes on top, and you bring a, a straw that you can buy at the DIY warehouse as long as it's not toxic, and drink your two liter out of your backpack and Screw the police. All right. We were warned the liberal media is already pushing a plan to let health sinners, like fat people and smokers, die without health care treatments. Maybe that'll make them secret death panels like in Great Britain, where they've been proven, where a national audit found that half of the dying patients placed on the controversial Liverpool Care Pathway are never told that life-saving treatment has been withdrawn. Oh, you know, we're just going to put you on this, and by the way, we stopped your medicine, and you're going to die because you're not worth it to us to keep you alive. We're the government, and we decide. Each year, 57,000 patients die without being told that their life-saving treatments have been stopped. The worries about Liverpool Care Pathway arise from reports that it is sometimes invoked without informing either the patient or the family. No death panels, though. Faced with a high cost of caring for smokers and overeaters, experts say society must grapple with a blunt question. Instead of trying to penalize them or change their ways, why not just let these health sinners die? Annual health care costs are roughly $96 billion for smokers and $147 billion for the obese, the government says. And these costs accompany sometimes heroic attempts to prolong lives, including surgery, chemotherapy, and other measures. But despite their rescue attempts, smokers tend to die 10 years earlier on average, and the obese die 5 to 12 years prematurely. Now, this is the way this goes, guys. You people reading are hearing this, you're going to, and some of you, there's going to be some bonehead out there that says, yeah, the fat people and the smokers brought it upon themselves anyway, right? First of all, Nuclear disasters and nuclear testing have led to as many cancers in America, particularly in the Nevada area, as uh, any smoking has. That's, that's, if you look at the numbers, it's right there. Having said that, if it's okay to go after fat people and smokers, the obese, what if it's okay a little bit later to go after those who don't have even a better body mass index? And what if it's okay to go after people that drink Sugar, like if they're not drinking only diet pop, which for some reason, despite the aspartame, people think is better and it's worse. Um, what if they do that? Well, then maybe they should be allowed. Then later on, if you're not a vegetarian, if you're a meat eater, maybe it's your turn. And if you don't think that this kind of thing can happen, then you're just a, a fool because it was okay to go after terrorists under the Patriot Act, right? Then you expand what terrorist means and suddenly it means anybody that knows that Obama is an idiot. So, come on, people. It is not okay to let fat people die just because they're fat. And if you let yourself think that way, then when they come after you, there ain't going to be anybody for you. And we all know the, the famous quote that I'm referring to, but it's very true. Stick up for ourselves, 
because they're looking for ways to divide us and kill us, and this is just another way. Speaking of idiots, and I do very little of this, but before I start, let me tell you something. I would rather stick my fully erect manhood into an electric pencil sharpener than listen to Frank Ocean, Chris Brown, or Rihanna. Is that abundantly clear? I would rather crawl over broken glass than listen to any of them because they're terrible. Frank Ocean writes the most boring music ever written. Chris Brown sucks. He's always sucked. And Rihanna sounds like a man, an off-key man. Having said that, Chris Brown, you go a step beyond. Because I don't know what Rihanna's like. The way she sticks up for Chris Brown and her lyrics, my guess is she's about as smart as a post. Sorry, posts. Hope I didn't offend you. I mean, come on. Parking meters are more intelligent than this woman. But I don't know what she's like as a person. She might be a really wonderful, sweet person, for all I know. Frank Ocean writes the most boring music ever written. And Chris Brown sings. Well, he doesn't sing. I'm not sure what that is. But I'm pretty sure the only reason that he ever beat up Rihanna was he was mad because he's the only person who sucks more than she does. Having said all of that, Chris Brown, you are a special kind of scum. Frank Ocean's probably a pretty cool guy. At the, at the end of this, you'll see why I said this. I didn't see Frank Ocean uh, spouting off at the mouth, even bothering to stick up for himself. Which makes Chris Brown look even more ridiculous. Not only does your music suck, Chris Brown, you suck! This is from uh, the Daily Mail. She's known for speaking her mind, and at the Grammys on Sunday evening, Adele didn't hold back after she saw Chris Brown's snub singer, Frank Ocean's win. Sore loser stayed seated as Frank Ocean took the stage to accept his first ever Grammy and refused to join in the standing ovation. The 24-year-old new mother could be seen staring across at the singer, shaking her head, and soon she appeared to give Brown, 23, a piece of her mind. Basically, Chris Brown boo, started crying because his sucky music got beaten by somebody else that writes sucky music, too. Oh, oh, you suck. You're a rotten human being. And before anybody says you've never been in his shoes, Jakari Jackson, I was... Everybody in the media speaks with within the top 20 of getting the job at InfoWars. We were so happy, or at least winning the contest. We were delighted, thrilled. You know what? Jakari Jackson got us. You know what we said? Way to go, Jakari. And every time I see him, I'm like, yeah, you know, he's good. He, he's good. Good good job for Jakari. Um, I just lost uh, a contest for the, uh, the Bob Costas. Look up, Bob Costas was right. Uh, I lost to a gentleman who was in my film, uh, Bilderberg, Why It Mattered to Me, which is also posted. You know what I did? I went to his website, and I said, hey, way to go. Congratulations. Good job. You were in my movie. I don't know if you remember me, but congratulations. You beat me. You know why? Because, and I'm in a band as well, if you're doing music, then you support other people that are in the same boat you are, even when that boat sucks as much as yours does, Chris. Um, when you're doing the news, the other day, Kyle got invited from the Media Speaks over to WTFRLY. You know what? Way to go! We were thrilled for him. That is how you don't become a piece of self-centered human health, Chris Brown. Thank you for listening to The Correct Views. If you have the ability to do so, please donate to the show, because then I won't have to do things like move my camera and look at my screen to show you an email. Um, if you've got a business or a charity, advertise on the show. I will give you amazing rates. Sometimes these get picked up by Alex Jones. Um, in the last week, we've been getting drilled. My share brigade has been out there. 78 views in three days. You guys are wonderful. Um, let's keep them going up. Up, up, up. Thank you for listening to The Correct Views, friends. God bless.